Hello and welcome to Crazy Hank TV, the greatest rewatch in the history of rewatch television. We're talking Lost today. Uh, um, already forgot <laughs> whatever it is, and uh, walk about. I have Bill and Karen with me. How's it going, guys? Hello. Awesome. Hi. How are you? So, what's going on in your guys' world, Karen? I know you got a hurricane coming, so. Uh, uh, yeah, always life in the uh, sunny in the tropics to be in paradise. You got to put up with the hurricanes. So yeah, we're preparing for that. It is what it is. Um, we got a few days out, but still the anxiety of just kind of prepping, shopping, boarding up the house, all that kind of fun stuff. So fingers crossed that maybe it just goes away because I don't want anybody to get it. But we're preparing. Is all the bread gone? All the bread is gone from the store. The water is gone. The bread is gone. The peanut butter is gone. <laughs> I always crack up when the milk is gone. I go, well, how do you keep the milk cold? You, you, can't. you can't. The milk is useless. Eggs are useless. I mean, it it's good because when you have to, I mean, we we make sure the barbecue is ready to go and we have a griddle and stuff. So you can, like, if, whatever, if the power goes out, which it will, uh, you could fry up some eggs and sausage on the barbecue and stuff before everything starts to go. But you can't go buy a new perishable stuff. It's useless. Yeah, because I, what it like is. To, we talked about it earlier before we started recording. I, you know, here in North Carolina, I, I was never used to that in San Diego, but, but my first experience with a uh, with a snow, ice snowing here, I went to the store to get some bread. I go, where's all the bread? And I go, where's all the milk? I go, what are people gonna do with the milk? But anyway, it's crazy. But you know, <laughs> so toast thing, I guess. You know, I I guess I, I but, you know, I guess you can put the milk when it's cold. At least you can put the milk outside, right? right? Or get the snow and yeah, but. But here, when it's 100 degrees and the humidity, and it feels like it's 110, and you can't even breathe because the humidity is so bad, you're not even wanting to go outside. And then you have no power. It's really an ugly situation. But you you got to make do. You just you find it, it's kind of like it ends up being like you're lost on the island because you have to just have bottled water <laughs> and go boar <laughs> hunting, <laughs> which is always fun, unless you're Michael. Yes. That's true. So, uh, based on what I, I, I maybe start with you, Karen, how did you get into Lost? What because it was I, I know you're you're a huge Lost fan, uh, Matthew uh, Matthew uh, Fox fan, right? Well, Matthew Fox fan because he was on my list of you know we've had that discussion of the the list, but yeah, yeah. Um, huge huge <laughs> huge Matthew Fox fan, of course. But Lost was uh, I fell in love with it immediately. How could you not? It was like a major motion picture on TV. Um, so when it came on, it was just a absolutely beautiful experience. And that that's how I try to describe Lost. It's not a TV show. It's not, you can't even put it in that same category. If, if you were sucked into it right away, it was more of an experience. So that's what I loved about it. Um, and then in the middle of all the pilot, you know, and then a couple of weeks after that, um, we had got hit with the twin hurricanes here in Florida and went without power for a few weeks and things like that. And then, wow. yeah, so we were having to try to watch Lost when the power came back, try to catch up. And it, so it didn't matter. I was sucked in from the pilot episode. Uh, then a couple of weeks after that, that's when I discovered I had cancer. Um, so there was a lot of things going on in my life and lost was happening at the same exact time. So right. I don't know. So the being sucked in with the whole magical experience of this journey that I wanted to be on with these people, I didn't know where it was going to go. I just was like, Oh my God, I got to be on this Island with these people. It's amazing. Um, and then I got sick in the middle of all that. So, it was a really, really, really rough time, of course. Um, but uh, I never gave up my watching Lost through any of that. That was the kind of only thing that was like my my own beacon of light through my being sick. Um, and then as that all tied to pass and I started to get well again, never gave up on Lost. It was every week I just was enthralled. Um, and then when I started to feel better about a year later, that's when I was like, I need to write about this. I need to, I'm seeing things within the show that are just, 
I feel like the show is telling me something. I need to pay attention. Something's going on. You couldn't put your finger on it. You just knew you were in the middle of this mystery and this adventure and this journey. Um, and that's when I started to just take notes about the show and stuff like that. And it just evolved for me. So I started to write these notes and share them on other podcasts or wrote a blog about it. And, and then it just became part of my existence. <laughs> and, and I'm so glad that it is. Nice. Yeah, it, it it is more like an addiction. It is. It, it, it is. It's, it's something that because we were talking last week with Axel and, and Ralph uh, last week. It it the community, and I've said this a hundred times. It's it's the best community I've ever been a part of. Ever. Absolutely, and it's it. You could call it an addiction. I I almost don't want to say the word obsession because that's. I feel like that's not the right word for what we all kind of gravitated to in this storytelling and the visuals and the the excitement of it it's it was became an addiction we all couldn't stop talking about it we all couldn't stop sharing ideas or what we thought was happening so it became very addictive but in the most positive way yeah i mean well except for i was losing a lot of sleep well <laughs> because i'd watch an episode i'd be going okay what was that i'd be replaying the episode in my head and i'm just like going I'd be up to like four o'clock in the morning. I have to get in two hours. I'm like going, because you, you, could, <laughs> you, you couldn't help but feel like the show is telling you things. It's right. like trying to actually connect with you. And um, I think that's just absolutely brilliant. Right. And that's yeah, so it, it, Karen, too. I mean, just your story is just, yeah, it's like lost in a nutshell that everybody comes together and, and you know, you where where you need it to be. And, and now you're better and it's a beautiful story. Right, I, for my own my own journey, it's, it's you know, I have to take the tag line of Lost at the end. It's like I needed Lost as much as maybe Lost needed me in a way because, yeah. it, you know, I couldn't have gotten through my own personal journey at that point that I was going through on my own and I, I could tell you this with 100%, I needed loss to help get me through that. And it did. Mm -hmm. And through all that, I met some really awesome people. And, uh, you know, we've all known each other for a great many years yeah. <laughs> because of it. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, this it just became this big adventure. We all became part of each other right. and, and always, a journey about, the show is about the characters and it's so true and we watch their journeys right and ironically it created our own journeys absolutely right. that without loss i would not have traveled as much as i have mm -hmm. i would not met incredible people like the both of you as i have and, and many others i mean it really is a was a life-changing experience it really did connect it a lot mm -hmm. of people it, yeah. it was and the show was about everything being connected um you know that's one of the layers of it and it really proves that we are all connected yeah. now more than well, ever well i know i've had people you know send us uh you know emails or they talk to you and stuff like that where they say you know almost similar sort of to you where loss saved them absolutely where it, just, it was such a, a, a great experience and it, that it saved them for whatever they had going on and it's just for a tv show to have that much power and and, and just it just and to this day, I mean, I was watching the two episodes today going, oh my God, these things are brilliant. Just yeah. just brilliant. And don't you feel that each episode is timeless? I yeah. mean, I, can, I have watched them on a loop literally since the show started. I mean, it's kind of, of course, because it's an addiction. I need a fix. <laughs> but <laughs> it's, I can watch them over and over and never tire right. of them. Or f it, it just still feels amazingly new they look brand new on tv still yeah, I mean, yeah. timeless you watch a show from 15 years ago it doesn't look like lost us today no no nope absolutely yeah. but we so all have we all have stories we all had like you said we each had a, a journey in our own lives wherever in the world we were so that's why each of us i kind of feel like we all got something from lost something different we all have different perspectives on what we experienced um and that's that's it it's about that whole we're all went on a journey yeah that's great and bill what brought you to loss did you start watching it right away i was i probably caught up i want to say four or five episodes in first season um i watched my god it was like watching a scrambled cable channel 
with how I watched them at the beginning. And to see what we can see today on like 4K TV, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Right? So yeah, and um, I actually didn't jump into the whole social media thing until end of season five. So I really didn't get the connections that you guys had earlier. Uh, but I, I've certainly made up for it, without a doubt. Yeah, it's just, uh, like you said, just it, it, everyone I've talked to that, it, that fell in love with the show, it has changed their life in a way. You know, like I said, you have friends around the world. Absolutely. I mean, friends in Australia. And we, we had, I know on our podcast, we had people listening to us in China and, and, and stuff. You're like, well, how are they listening to us? But, you know, I guess, you know, they yep. make do. But it, that just shows you how popular that loss was, that it was worldwide. It was just a yep. worldwide phenomenon. And, and to, the, to this day. You know, people will still want to. I go, we do the panel every year, and I go every year. I go, come on, what are you talk about? And every year, there's something to talk about. Yeah, Lost uh, is alive and well. It's everywhere I go. If I run into Losties, or if I, you know, I'm at a convention, that you can't help but say, we all have to get together. It's alive and well, and you, we all get together. We enjoy each other's company. We have a blast. You have a couple of drinks, but you all end up talking about Lost. <laughs> so it comes back to having some really great in-depth conversations about a show that we are just so in love with. Yeah, because yeah, I know for me, I haven't really watched it in like three or four years. <gasps> I kind of <gasps> said, okay, because I always said, I go, the next time I watch Lost, it's going to be for me. I go, I'm not going to podcast about it. I'm not going to do this. But then I started this channel I, and people are like going, well, why don't you talk about Lost? I'm like, oh, I don't know. And then I go, I go, you know what? I, that's a, I, what, I'm going to try and get like different people in the Lost community. I'll see if that'll work and we'll try and get to work. And so far I've got a lot of people lined up to do it. And watching, like I said, watching the show today, I was like going, I was watching actually with my granddaughter who's uh, just turned one and she's just, she's just staring at it. Of course she doesn't know what's going on, but she's, well, maybe she does. I don't know. But uh, she was just like, she didn't take her eyes off the screen. She's just watching it. And I'm trying to remember, okay, is, is, is this going to be a scary part? Do I need to cover her eyes? But there was nothing really scary in either. I mean, the, the boar is kind of scary, but there's nothing too yeah too scary in the movie. But uh, I can't wait till she gets old enough to I can, you know, because I got what, three grandkids now. Of course, Jay will probably get his kids involved in it. But uh, I just, I it's just, I, you, like you see on Twitter, you see on Facebook where people are getting their kids, they're now 10 or 11, and they're getting their kids involved and just continuing the... Uh, well, it's a yeah, rite of passage. It's, a, it's yeah. a rite of passage at this point. You have to. It's it's uh, because it be, we're like the first generation losties, so it it, right. it gets it gets in your blood, and you can't you can't help but want to share that. You know, right? right. Yeah, it's it's it is just incredible. But um, we can start with the, what is it again? Uh, tabula rasa. Tabula rasa. I always <laughs> want to call it tabala rasa. No, just tabal But okay, we'll we'll start with Kate's first. Uh, flashback episode yeah probably, i probably one of my favorite kate flashback episodes really yeah i, I don't know why i always liked it okay I but like, I, what, are you, what are you guys thoughts on it and i thought it was i i really enjoyed the episode too for the fact that it kind of involved it was kate's flashback but it really touched everybody in the episode the whole tabula rasa thing the clean slate the start over new um Everybody seemed to have, they, they kind of pinpointed everybody's restart. I mean, Kate, obviously. Um, oh, everybody except the Marshal. He didn't have a good restart. But, uh, <laughs> Kate, he was just bitter. Uh, yeah. Even Walt and Michael, I mean, they were going down the tubes there for a second. But then at the end, when, uh, when Michael got the dog back, uh, Jim and Son were kind of, kind of, he told her he loved her and he kind of felt warm and fuzzy. At the end, uh, Troy had tossed the apple over to Saeed. I mean, uh, well, opposite, I'm sorry. Saeed tossed the right. apple to uh, Sawyer. So, I mean, everybody kind of was starting fresh. And even as far as what Kate did, I mean, at the end of the episode, Jack was like, I don't care. This is all, we're all starting over yeah. here. So, yeah, I, I like the episode. Um, like I said, it's, it, it, we feel like we're initially getting a Kate flashback, and indeed we are. Mm -hmm. um, but what, Knowing what we know now about the island being life, death, and rebirth, we can see that that theme is there from the very, very beginning, obviously, with, the, with what the episode is. Um, but uh, it didn't matter what Kate did, to Jack at least. Um, obviously, I kind of feel like 
especially by the time we got to just this third episode and knowing what the title was that I kind of felt like, because she brings up the words about the marshal as he's suffering. And I'm like, well, they're all suffering. Mm -hmm. You can kind of already see, um, we have the beginning stages of us getting exposed to Jack and all of these castaways suffering in their own being somehow. And right. they're needing a chance to shed that past life and start over. Um, and so that's all there really from the beginning. And that's pretty cool to see. Yeah. Um, but a couple of things did stand out to me because um, I want to point out that Saeed in that episode was the very first person to organize all the castaways and give them jobs to do to contribute to the group. Mm -hmm. Jack was not the first pun. It was Saeed. He did that in that episode. So I thought that was pretty important to kind of remember that for later on because Zaid always was a very key player in the group. Right. Oh, yeah. um, and uh, obviously the song Wash Away later on about, you know, washing away your past and starting over and stuff. But an important thing for me was by the time we got to the final scene and we see Locke watching Walt with the dog and his father and um, the last note of that music rings out as it's kind of zooming in on Locke's face. And I was like, oh, I got to pay attention to this uh -huh. dude because he's pretty important. And there's like a little bit of kind of sounds ringing out at the end of that note there. And I'm like, hmm, I, I don't know. This guy is sinister. I thought it was like it, sinister. It was kind of sinister. And you got a little bit of that kind of. It's not really the monster sound, but it's right. kind of, there's that little bit of that tone ringing out in the background of that note. And I'm like, well, I got to pay attention to this yeah. dude because he's really, really important. Um, so for me, I was like, yeah, okay. Yeah, right. we know who Kate is, kind of. We know she's on the run. Another thing I wanted to point out about Kate was Kate is with Ray eating bacon and eggs. Well, is that so funny? You say, okay, well, because she tells Jack in one episode, she's a vegetarian. So we get these kind of contradictory things, but it also shows we all do live kind of two different lives. Right. I've been known to eat so. a chicken wing or two, so. <laughs> and Charlie can't swim or he won't Char swim. He don't swim. He can't swim. So, but those are the <laughs> things, those are the kind of the things that I would always kind of gravitate to that were those minute things but they were important to me to pay attention to i thought the funny part too was when um jack did want to know what kate did during the episode I, yes I think he kind of gave in and says i'm not gonna squeeze it out of you but there was a point when she came back and she goes jack i gotta talk to you and even us as the audience went all right here we go we're gonna find out what's going on so they go down to the beach and she starts yapping about french woman signal and jack's looking at her he's like hearing like the peanuts teacher sound what, 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 what. he's not even hearing <laughs> And he's like, uh, is that it? You got anything else? And she's like, uh, you know, he thought he was going to get the scoop, but she never gave it up. Yeah. 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 Now you met, uh, Karen, you mentioned how Locke, you, you had to pay attention because Locke was, this guy's going to be important. Because in the pilot, parts one and two, he wasn't. I mean, he was there, but he wasn't like, okay, this guy, because I, I was like said last week, they did a great job. Because when you have that many characters, a lot of times TV shows will throw it all, you know, throw it, and you're trying to, okay, what's this guy again? They did a great job of bringing along characters slowly. Yes. And that this one, like you said, Locke, okay, when he gives that look at the end, you're like, all right, what's up with this guy? Right, and you hear that sound, but also just by him kind of giving that line to Walt about a miracle happened to him. Well, right. now we're already, already getting a little tidbit of uh something happened to him that makes makes him different so right. right off the bat that kind of is a thing and then you know of course the you know one side one light one dark you know right. we're already getting the setup of what our story really is about um but by him saying a miracle happened to him um things like that so you know and of course by the time we get to the next episode we find that there's quite a bit more to Mr. Locke. <laughs> I thought about it too. That, that could have been one of the, I mean, the writers, Axel talked about it last week, how they plant like forks in the road in case they want to write something. Yes. Right. So, you know, what if they only had one season? That could have been a fork in the road where he had a little smoky in him already. You know, they yeah. right. put in that he was already, you know, the evil guy. So they could have, you know, went yep. along with that. 
So. Well, it's also where where Jake, uh, Jake, <laughs> uh, Kate and Jack are talking. Where Jack, I think, says, "I don't have the exact line, but he says, Kate, we all died." Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now yeah. that could have been, you know, that yep. set theories that they were dead. The, you know, they were in purgatory. They were dead the whole time. I mean, some people still believe they were dead the whole time. Again, I don't, I don't waste my time trying to convince people that. But it's just like, see, I uh, take that totally as the metaphoric um, died, which makes sense now that we kind of know really what the island is right. later on in retrospect. But I kind of always gravitated to it was never literal deaths. There was more of that ego death or that old life is dying away or things like that. Yeah. So I kind of always gravitated to that more notion than physical death. Yeah, and these writers are so brilliant. They were never going to box themselves into one story. So right. they always had little outs that they could have went a different direction without a doubt. Yes, absolutely. They were, prob they were probably still shocked, though, about how this show got dissected, though. You, you there was no way they could have expected this because nope. no show had ever been – there's, I mean, you know, you had podcasts starting, blogging was starting, you know, be a big, big thing. You just, you had, you know, it wasn't the water cooler; it was the internet. You know, people right. got yeah. on the internet, and and so there's no way they could have expected this, yeah. but they, they did set it up great. I used to watch I'm an sorry? episode, and I find out I was watching the background, looking for little clues. I'd have right. to watch it again because I had no idea what went on because I was like just looking in the background the whole. Oh, yeah, right. it just was, it's just crazy how this, show, and like for them to pull it off the way they did is again, just credit to their brilliance. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yep. But you know, we, we did talk about Locket, the lot, his look at the end when he's looking at, because there's a lot of, a lot of people had the theory that the smoke monster had already kind of taken into him. But you know, again, we know that can't be true because, you know, I don't want to spoil people, but four seasons later or whatever it is, we, Locke does go off the island. So there's no reason Smokey would have come back. Yeah. But, I, I always said, I go, no, I think this is because we find out later he has daddy issues. <laughs> a lot of them have daddy issues. And I think it was his resentment. I think he, you know, Walt was probably talking to him, you know, my dad wasn't around. My dad wasn't this, my dad. So when he sees Walt kind of, you know, being happy with his dad, I think it was, it was more resentment. I think it was more resentment than anything else. Yeah. yeah. You, could, you could say that. Yep. I mean, it, 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 but it was such a sinister. I mean, at the time, you know, like, he's, like you said, Karen, we know he's going to be important, but I had we had no idea what his background was. Right at that point, yeah. we didn't. If we would have known, we oh yeah, he's just bitter because you know they have a relationship now where his dad you know pushed him out a window. So yeah. <laughs> it was yeah. just so, something. Yeah. About, it was just something about that whole zoom in scene to him and the look he had on his face i'm like yeah i just it just sat with me that way that's something we got i got to pay attention to this character right but the episode did really like grease the slides for for the next episode yes uh, by the fact that he got he gave michael he showed michael where the dog was right you know so he wasn't going to play hero so kind of made you feel warm and fuzzy for him at that point and and kind of when the next episode came you really got sucked into the warm and fuzzy, you know. Yeah. Yeah. It. What about Kate's off island? I mean, uh, her. Uh, she. She's. She's always. But she. She's. Like you said, she saved Ray. She could have ran and and saved herself, but she had. She. She saved Ray. She pulled off his arm, but she still manages. To, still managed to save Ray. She, so that she has a heart too. I mean, she's flawed, but she has a heart. Absolutely. Everybody is flawed, but you, you hope that there's some humanity in, inside these people. Right. And I think that they were just giving us a little tidbit to say, well, obviously she did something, but yet she's still kind mm -hmm. and caring. Because at this point, the only one that you don't see that has a heart is Shannon. Because even, right. even Sawyer has a heart because, you know, when he doesn't, he does, he does, he's trying to kill the marsh, you know, put the marshal out of his misery and he doesn't do it. Well, his heart was in the right place to do it. He just failed. Yeah. <laughs> and you could see, you could see that he felt, he, he felt bad. I mean, so even Sawyer has a heart. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. But I, I've asked this question a hundred times. I asked it last week. Was there something more between the marshal and Kate that we never got? Well, he did. I watched it again. And when he was talking to Jack, he said something about watch her and he looked at Jack and he said, Oh, she got to you too. Right. Yeah. So when he said two, I mean, T O O. He, he just took it too personal because mm -hmm. she's not, she wasn't, uh, she wasn't public enemy number one, but he went to the extreme to get her. And it, it, like I said, it was personal for him. Right. Yeah. Yeah. 
They get so I wish we, got too involved. Yeah, I just wish we would have got more, maybe, but maybe it's just like, again, with a lot of lost questions, it's for our imagination and for us to, but I've always said, I go, he, he was, he was involved with her somehow. Mm -hmm. right. There was something that she was using her charm or her, you know, yep. something. But anyway, I, uh, but at least he's out of his misery now and he's, <laughs> he's gone. <laughs> I know, but poor Ray never got his $23,000 to pay off his mortgage. <laughs> I know, I know. I and they start using the, you start noticing the numbers. In yes. some of these episodes, you, you, whereas before, you know, when they say 23 and, and, and Jackson 23A, uh -huh. you know, whatever, whatever that does. It's not till we start getting the numbers. Oh, wait a minute. And then it became an obsession where mm -hmm. it's like, that's a number, that's a number. It's like, oh my God, please stop with the numbers. I can't take it anymore. But uh, you guys want to move on to walk about anything else about uh no nope. it. it was a great episode and i'm glad we got to see a little bit of what was going on in her life before but we really kind of got that a little head start to lock i think at the end yeah. and that wash away is one of my favorite non g Aquino musical montages yeah what did, you, what did you guys think of the flash were you a fan of flashbacks in the beginning or i oh, so loved them was, yeah yeah, I always said it, they said because it 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 told the because Bill, you mentioned before in the beginning that it's a character show, it's a character driven show, and the flashbacks told us they just they they just told us everything we needed about from you know the flashbacks told us about the characters. Like when some people were, go, are you not watching the flashbacks? They're telling you that this guy can't do this or she can't do that. Or it's, mm -hmm. so I, again, I love the flashbacks. Yeah. And I, that's one of the things I'm watching shows now sometimes. You actually have to almost get into a second season to really get to know the characters. Right. Right. Because you have so many. With Lost, you actually got a whole episode. When that Io, you knew whose Io was, who was opening. The right. Episode, and that was their episode. And, and you really got to know them. Without well, the f I feel like the, flash, the flashes were so important because the, they were there to, um, you know, all the things that happen in our lives make us who we are today. And it was important for us to see what happened in their lives that made them who they are today. We needed to know why Sawyer became Sawyer. We needed right. to know that. We, we, what pain did he go through in his life to bring him to that place emotionally? Right. And we needed to know, you know, so that's, that's part of that whole journey telling. And it, I loved those bits of the, the flashes because that's how we, we, Get where we are. Oh, look, he wasn't yeah, really that's... a nice guy. Look at that. He was he was really a nice guy. Look right. He was just a product of his environment. He was a byproduct right. of a terrible thing that happened to him. Yeah. Um, and and this is where he is today. But does that mean he has to stay pigeonholed in that idea of himself? Or can he let that part of him die? You know, and then begin to be a new person mm -hmm. and and you know, have a better life from that. Your experience makes you who you are, but we're not supposed to wallow and dwell in it we have to learn from it and grow you know so yeah. well i think last what well, axel said last week that oh, people complain they were making it up as they go along I and mean, maybe some of it and i know i don't have a problem with that anyway it's, what's, that's it's what storytelling is you're making it yeah, up <laughs> yeah but when i said earlier about sawyer when he when he was going to put the marshal of his misery and he and he didn't do it and he he screwed up he you could see that there is somebody and so this the writers were you know, like I said, they were dropping little hints everywhere down the road what was going to happen with these characters. They knew mm -hmm. what was going to happen with most of these characters. So, right. I, again, yeah. great job. But I, I, uh, and that's why we fall in love with these characters. And there's right. little there's little bits of all of us in them that we yeah. can relate to, and that's what that's important. We're all flawed. Yep. Well, maybe not. Maybe not me, but some people. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am very flawed. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, now we're going to talk about probably the show that I, most people got. Like I said, it, it's what what made me. Uh, it's it sucked me in. I mean, it, I you know the pilot and and all the episodes leading up to the three episodes leading up to it were great, but this episode when you see the ending, it's like, um, and then you when you're watch when you watch when you rewatch, you go, ah, they're telling us here, they're telling us here, they're telling mm -hmm. that he he was not able to walk. They were saying like Randy basically just said it. Mm -hmm. But you're thinking, oh, Randy, you're just an idiot. I don't want to listen to you. So right, but I sh right. we should have been listening to him. But anyway, let's talk about Walkabout. Probably a lot of people would say it's their favorite episode of all time. 
That'd be me. That's my favorite. Yeah, it's yeah, I would, my favorite I would probably too. Agree. Yeah, I would one. agree. Yeah, um, that that was uh, that was the turning point in us. I think as the observers to the show to say, okay, this is way bigger than we even thought it could be because now we, we're getting reveals and, and that's a hell of a reveal yeah. oh, to yeah. experience. And it just kept you on your toes the whole, because even like so far as when, who is this guy, right? So yeah, he does a flashback to his office and he's like, uh, Colonel, you there? I'm like, oh man, he's a Colonel, check it out. But yeah, no, he's been a Colonel. <laughs> it kind of like all the way through, kept you like, you know, Wiggling his toes, you're like, well, yeah, I would check if all my pieces were still there if I was in a plane crash. That's no. Yeah, it was not. It was nothing out of the ordinary with yeah. him laying on the beach like that. You'd be because you probably, you know, again, they, you probably shouldn't have survived anyway. Right, right. That but was that was that was the most amazing thing from the start. But then when you find out he can, he was in a wheelchair. And you're like, right. why is he walking now? What what is going on? But exactly. but it starts okay. with his. It starts with his eye. Mm -hmm. And then the Moving. shoe. The shoe is. I think it took me four or five rewatches of that. I mean, I must have seen it a dozen times now. But the bottom of his shoe, that's what got me. The first first scene, it had never touched the ground. It was like right. straight up a Tom McCann box. It never touched the ground. And that's what they were showing us. Yeah, yeah. it was right there, the first scene. So, yeah, that's just, I mean, that's you just, can wiggle on the toes. Just, you can wiggle your toes, but you know, but the shoe never touched the ground. That was amazing. Yeah. And, you know, to, to him laying there, and this is me being a, an absolute insane nitpicker, because that's who I am. But when he's laying there, <laughs> his other pant leg that has the shoe on it, the pant leg towards the bottom has all black soot on it. Mm -hmm. Oh, so really? It's very, it's very smoky-ish. So oh, um, yeah. I never, I've but, never uh, noticed that. But also in this episode, when he's at the calculator and Randy's kind of taunting him and things like that, right. the calculator makes that click, click monster sound in it. Mm -hmm. So we, were, we are already getting connections to him having this other uh, connection to the island already in, well, cause it, in cause Smokies. Because I, I know that was more of a, a theory that happened later on because people – at the time, you're like going, okay, it's a calculator making, you know, it's just the noise a calculator makes. But then when you hear what the smoke monster makes, right? you're like, going, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Locke was, so you kind of go on. And then at the end, like you said, they did have it probably planned the whole time that that was going to happen. Right. And that's well, just, I, find, I, I found it interesting because here we have this character who we learn in this episode is misrepresenting himself. Mm -hmm. So the writers are telling us, I'm telling you right now, this character is misrepresenting what you think right. he is. So they're literally saying it to us. Um, so that's so awesome to, to have that reveal. But him being connected and somewhat, however, however he is or was going to be connected to what we perceive as Smokey at the end, um, is also revealed when Kate's trying to put the antenna up in the tree. Right. And um, the smoke monster does come. They hear it when she's trying to put the antenna up and her first and Locke's not there, but her first thing is when she hears the monster coming, her only word is lock. Yeah. And I'm like, why would she say lock? Mm -hmm. Why did she say Michael? <laughs> she said <laughs> lock. <laughs> yeah, she <know>? did. <laughs> she said, Good point. So, yeah. So these are the things that I think that the writers are telling us where, where we are connecting the pieces for you early on in a way that it's kind of right there. Yeah. But Mr. Locke misrepresented himself, and um, but also on the other hand, he's he's a person on the island who knew he was going to be there for a reason. He played a specific role, and you'll get to those as you get through all your other episodes and things. But um, he knew he was there for a reason. He was, and he knew he was also there to learn. Um, but Locke was our our character who, as much as he knew he had purpose there. And it was his destiny to be there because this episode also is about destiny. He, right. he cries that this is my destiny. I'm supposed to do this. Mm -hmm. I'm supposed to go. So he knows his destiny is tied to the island for whatever reason. But he, we also see that while his time on the island, he's one of the characters that takes three steps forward, two steps back all the time. All but the that's time, yeah. part of that's part of his learning. All right. Well, you yeah. see why you see why he does. I'm sorry, Bill. You see why he does it because of his flashbacks. Right. 
because he just wants to be accepted. He just wants his parents, you know, his his mom or his, you know, and of course his dad. He just wants to be accepted. Oh yeah, you can have my kidney, and then you know, his dad runs right. off. It just it's he, you can see he's he's just a he's a troubled guy. Right. It's well, almost we all want to be loved. Almost right. It's almost an awkwardness that he has. That yeah. He's trying yes. so hard that he screws himself sometimes like that. So yeah. Yep. But it's I just it's just a tremendous episode, and again, Locke is a. I belong to some Facebook lock. I blocked a lot of lost uh, Facebook page, but someone put a thing. I don't know if they just did it to get people to comment on it, but they said lock the least likable, least interesting character on lost. And, and he's went, my favorite character yeah, no, on lost. I'm, I'm team lock. Yeah. I yeah. said, I said that I go, yeah, I, no one criticized him more than me probably, but I, he is the best character on the show. Yeah. Yep. Most interesting character on the show. I mean, he, but it's just like I go, I go. Oh, they had it's probably one of those bait things where they're just trying to get people to comment yeah. on it. But I was like, oh, that's just crazy. I, but it, anyway, I just uh, um, moving forward. I, I like this. The scene I like is we, we we hunt. He throws the knife and and Sawyer. He goes, well, you either have good aim or you have bad aim. So, yeah. yeah uh, and he has all those knives, all those knives. So, um. And of course, he gives the bet, probably the greatest line in the series. In the series, don't tell me what I can't do. Absolutely. I mean, that's if you say, if you tell any if you say you hear that you know exactly that's from Lost. Yep. It's just a, it's just an amazing episode. But anything else? What else do you guys get out of the episode? Um, I like that Locke lies to Michael at the end of the episode because uh, Michael asks him, uh, you know, did you see it? Guess yeah. referring to the the monster and Locke actually lies to him and says no he didn't. Yeah. Why? Why? Why did he lie? But again, we lo we are learning that Locke misrepresents himself and yeah, he right. his own inner thoughts. Now we talked about the ending of uh, Tabula Rasa. Locke mm -hmm. finished the look. At the end of this episode, he has the most shining, happiest grin on his face when he sees that wheelchair. Right. And the last scene of his face is like just joy. So. Yeah, because he beat it. I'm out of that chair. I'm I'm out of it. Like I, I got out of it. You know. Yeah. Um. Also, in this episode, we learned that uh, Rose feels that her husband is not dead, and I think that's important too. Mm -hmm. That she feels that even though the tail section went somewhere, her husband is fine. Yeah, yeah she didn't feel. She knew it. She knew it. She had a she sense of knowing. And that's what always got me on that Rose worked for Dharma because. Uh, I said, how would she know? How would she know? She had, she had to be, it had to be a plan, but that yeah, didn't and pan that, out. But. The, that's true. But the other thing too, what else is important in this episode? Jack sees his father. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, it's like Bill, you said about how this episode sets up this episode. It sets up the next episode because, yep. and, and you wonder why, why is Jack so ant? I don't want to, I don't want to give the, you know, he tells uh, Claire, no, you can give that. You can give that. I'm not doing it. I don't. Well, he's, he's in mourning too, because his dad, he was bringing his dad, but we don't know at the time, but he's bringing his, and we don't know who that guy is that he's chasing after. But again, another brilliant move by the writers of Lost. I mean, just, yeah. it's just fantastic. I just, I, I just, but like I said, you go, you know, knowing what we know now, you go, oh, that's just brilliant. At the time, we're like going, what is he, why is he seeing things? What is it? Is he, is he, is he is maybe he hasn't had enough water? Is he under too much stress? He's right. you know, trying to save people. And, Right, you know, but so it's we're just, now four episodes in, and I, I don't, I haven't seen too many wasted scenes or lines. No, it's amazing. It's like every. No, it, it's just there's no, uh, there was no fillers. Uh, exactly. with, with the, a lot of they got accused for in the middle, you know, maybe season three and season four with the filler episodes. Right. Really, not, maybe probably not their fault, the network fault, yeah, fault. But uh, yeah, you're right. There was, there's yeah. no, everything is interesting. Everything, it, yeah. even you know, you, you've seen it ten times. It's, it's still fascinating how. Everything is going along, and you know it just. I mean, I, we just, hung on every. We hung on every word. Right. We literally and I did, hung I did, on I did, every I did, word. Yeah, and I did today when I was watching. I'm like, it just. It's like I was watching it for the first time. Yeah. Like, oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! You're still trying to figure things out. You're like, let me see here. There's something else I'm missing here. Well, it's like when Kate tells Locke, you know, you can't, you can't do that. You can't, you know, you you can't go. You know, he wants to go get the board by himself. You, Don't tell me what I can't do. You know, he's all angry, and we're like. Why is this guy so angry? Why is he? And you, you know, you learn at the end, and it's a sad scene. Mm -hmm. You know, he he wants to go on the walk about. He's been telling Helen about it. You know, but he's Helen's a paid, you know, <laughs> paid, you know, the the whole thing. But it, it's uh, 
I, he almost brings a tear to your eye when you're watching because yeah. you can sympathize with him. They, you know, he's, this is what he wants to do. And this guy's like, you know, I got, you know, you can't blame the guy. He's got rules, you know, our insurance company won't allow it, right. but you, you can't help but feel sorry for him. Then when you see him in the wheelchair, like going, Oh my God. And that's when you're like, Oh my God. And it's Locke's theme too. It's the music that does yeah. Locke's theme song. You hear it there. You're going to hear it again when he's banging on, that metal thing that yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've like, done everything you've asked. <laughs> <laughs> and that motion just it builds up. It's the magic of that Giacchino guy. Yeah. yeah. He's pretty amazing too. Yeah. <laughs> we'll keep him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but poor poor Locke is one of those really broken characters who just wanted so desperately to have a purpose in life and be loved and 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 you know contribute to to life and every the humanity and just have that purpose and it always slipped through his fingers like you said before it's almost like he tried too hard here's my kidney dad yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> i don't need it you can have well, it well i always i always said Locke's biggest problem like you said he he was probably the most not for, for survival he's probably the most knowledgeable person on that island mm -hmm. and yet he just got everything would distract him this would distract yes. him this was you know everything was messing with his head you know be, you know because we he was gullible and like well, you said, he, the interesting thing you mentioned the word distraction and you're gonna you're gonna hit on that when you talk about question mark because when he's involved with echo and everything you know we, we learn it it is john that's distracted he has a purpose he just didn't stay on the path he kept right you know just getting distracted um and um but obviously every everything that happens to each person leads them to where they're supposed to be right i mean he caught the was, dog whistle out of the stick he caught the dog whistle out of the stick <laughs> yeah it was that was pretty incredible <laughs> he's awesome <laughs> <laughs> but i think it was the most frustrating thing about walk what makes him a great character but also frustrating because you're like okay you, you got the ability to walk again you could you could be the guy you could have been the guy that people came to okay you know well we find later on he helps charlie get off heroin i mean there's so many things that he did in a positive way but yet the distractions and and just he just could not stay focused and that it, he it, it just he wanted to be more than what he was he and wanted also, to be a colonel absolutely but i also feel too it was like this natural um when you have the the magnets that are actually you know pulling away from each other instead of a together him and jack just could not agree to work together it didn't it wasn't going to happen uh Locke may have tried to try to you know get jack you know later on to say hey we you know there's some things you need to kind of be aware of what's going on here but they just couldn't get on the same page together so they that them being at odds i think also played a part in him eventually just saying i gotta take my own path and you find that out later on you know um but yeah jack was quite stubborn right from the get-go <laughs> well jack didn't want to be a leader right he's reluctant but I, I also i also blame Locke because well i think it's the next episode Locke tells him you need to be the leader Right. You need to step, but Locke did everything he could to undermine Jack as the leader. So <laughs> you can kind of understand that they, they're they just two people that were there in, in life. We all have people that we just can't click with. Right. And they're just two people that couldn't click. They just, they just couldn't, yep. they, they couldn't coexist on that island together. Right. Absolutely. It, it just wasn't going to happen as much as, you know, you try to find ways, but it just wasn't going to happen. But that made the show more interesting, I think, than, than them getting along, buddy buddy cop show or something like that. But uh, but I I did I did write down something too because I noticed that in in the pilot episode, Jack's when the smoke monster's coming down, Charlie falls, Jack saves him. Yes. He saves Charlie. In this episode, when the boars come running out, uh, Charlie falls again. Jack saves him. Later on, Jack saves him when Ethan has hung him. Yes. Jack saves him. Mm -hmm. So the only time Jack couldn't save him was when he was in the uh, the underwater yeah. hatch. Yeah, yeah. So Jack wasn't there; he couldn't save him. So right. was, were they planning that the whole time too? Yeah, I mean, we do know that there are sacrifices that the island demands, <laughs> and <laughs> there Boom. are. Boom. Okay, there are sacrifices, and Charlie at that point felt he needed to sacrifice himself because Desmond 
told them so. <laughs> but that's a whole other part of the story. Um, but yes, but it's true. Jack was there to to pick up Charlie a bunch of times, and um, mm -hmm. until he felt, I think Charlie just felt like he needed to do it because he he was a sacrifice that had to happen. Right. And we also see Nadia for the first time. Mm -hmm. in a yes. In pictures and. Because that's always been a, a, you know, the 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 finale where Shannon is the one that Saeed mm -hmm. goes with, and you're always like going, uh, I never got it. I always thought it should have been yeah. Nadia because Nadia was his. You can see how he looks when he looks at the picture. He's like right. he's in love, and I. I don't know. I kind of think that in a way, and this is just my opinion, just my opinion, because I know a lot of people feel that way. It should have been Saeed with Nadia. And why is he with Shannon? And I, I, but I feel like possibly it's because not about who we were in love with in our daily life, but the see, the thing is that those people on the island are the ones that helped each other connect so that they can experience their rebirth. So it was Shannon who helped Saeed, and Saeed is the one that helped Shannon in that regard. So that's the only way I can justify that. That's a great um, point. Is, that. You know, what, what's happened on the island was all these experiences to experience your life, death, and rebirth. But only these people that you interacted with there were the ones to help you achieve that on the island. So on the island, it, Shannon helped Saeed and Saeed helped Shannon. So that's, that's where a, that's that... A, uh, great point. Yep. Just my two cents Shan on that. Because <laughs> Sh Shannon wasn't likable. Right. She wasn't. But when we get to Shannon's death, she wanted to be validated as well. And it was Saeed who did validate her and said, I do believe you. And, you know, so there are reasons kind of why that that's why my thought process is the only way to justify that in my own head is because of the experience of that growth, life, death and rebirth was with those people. Because you see the frustration with Boone with Shannon, because he goes, oh, they're back, but not, the bald guy didn't come back with him. Right. And, you know, I wonder if something happened. She goes, so there's no food? Right. <laughs> She's very <laughs> selfish. <laughs> right. She she was very, very selfish and right. very self-centered. And um, she was not a humanitarian in any no. way. <laughs> um, but it took a lot for her to find some ways to contribute to the cause later on. Right. Um, and it may have not been the way we see our other characters contribute to the cause. Um, but for her, that was the way it had to happen. So, but. And again, she has a great backstory that we kind of go, okay, now I can kind of see why she is the way she is. Right. You know, it all you know comes full circle, but I, I, I love the scenes between Boone and Shannon because he's, He's like, I, I want to be, I want to help everybody. I want to help everybody. I want to, I want to be, you know, she even calls him Captain America. And she just doesn't, you know, she uses Charlie to get the fish, you know, Hurley and, you know, and Charlie are getting the fish and he brings a fish. <laughs> he just, and Charlie realizes he's been used because Boone says, I'm sorry, uh, this happened to you. But <laughs> yeah, it's sad because she learned how to, how to use people. And, right. um, you know, and it, that's, this is part of, the part of Shannon that she needs to, that's actually stifling her growth. She's not letting go of that mindset of how she's supposed to survive in the world. That's right. not how it gets done, mm -hmm. you know? So okay. um, she has to learn her lessons. Like Boone said, you can't use your gold card to get a fish. So. <laughs> <laughs> Great luck. Was that, was, we, I forgot to mention too, it starts off with the, the reason they run, they realize they're out of food is because uh, Sawyer has the peanuts. And then Hurley wants to shake. He goes, well, but, and again, you're probably thinking, you know, they'll find us. There'll be a rescue queue. I mean, how, how will you not find a plane that's crashed on, on an island? You, you know, we don't know what's going on. And yeah, they use up all the food. There was no uh, rationing. And then you said how uh, um, Saeed steps up. He's like, look, we can, there's things we can get on there. And I think that's when Sawyer uh, Locke throws a knife, says we hunt. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. 
Yep. Now it's a good. Thank God that Locke knows all about boar and knows yeah. all about having to catch them. Um, but he had a purpose on the island. He was. He, yeah. you know, Everybody has a, a role to play, and right. um, everybody does have something to contribute in a situation like that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, somebody would know how to, you know, hunt or cook or wash clothes in the ocean or find water. Everybody would have something to contribute. And some people don't want to contribute. They just want everything handed to them, Shannon. Um, you know, but, <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, thank God that there was someone who knew how to, you know, even Jin, he was a fisherman. So he knew how right. to go and catch fish. So everybody would have a way or should have a way to contribute in a society that's just trying to survive. So Son knew how to brush teeth. She knew how, thank God she knew what to do with that aloe. <laughs> yeah. There was a, 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 it reminds me of another scene with Locke that was really interesting. And also he has all the knives. You're thinking, okay, who is this guy? You know, is he is a mass murderer? Cause the way he's describing killing the boar, you know, mm. we'll distract it. I'll get the, and I'll slit its throat. And you're like going, Ooh, man, that's pretty graphic. Yeah. When you think about it, it's, it's pretty intense scene about how you're in, how you're going to kill this board. You have to get so graph, but he was giving it, you know, play by play. And I was like, again, he's just a, like, th- I think that's when I fell in love with Locke as far as a character, because he, like, again, he was just so interesting in what was going on. And again, of course, when you find out he's in a wheelchair, well, how, that became what the question for what, three seasons, mm-hmm. how did this guy end up in a wheelchair? How did he end up in a wheelchair? And this is all the different theories were going on that maybe he was involved with the uh, car crash with Shannon's dad and, you know, the whole the whole thing that was going on, I think they were just doing that to tease us. They probably knew the whole time what they were going to do, but they're just like, oh, let's mess with these. Because I, th- I do think the writers mess with the fans. Oh, there's sure. No, there's no question they were having fun. They they were reading the boards or listening to podcasts and blog. They, they knew what was, we were thinking. And so I think they said, oh, let's just put this in right here. This will mess with them for a while. <laughs> but but anyway, I think we the, got some really great colorful um background stories on these people and yes. uh that was amazing and that's what sucked us in yeah definitely any other thoughts on it anything else you guys want to add other than it was awesome a great episode uh probably the one episode that if you weren't sure you were going to like the show was going to make you love the show yep. <laughs> so. i don't know anybody that didn't like it i mean there's because there, you have a few episodes people oh, i didn't like that one there's no way I, i've never met anybody that said Oh, that was, I, I knew it was coming the whole time or something like that. I mean, I guess you could have figured it out if, like you said, the, the clues were all there. Right. You look, Cause he, you never see him standing up when he's laying in the bed, talking to Helen. He, you know, now I look at it, I go, well, he is looking like he doesn't know that great acting by Terry O'Quinn. Mm-hmm. It does look like he can't use his legs. So it's just like, but the clues are there, but you're just, you're just caught up in the story and you, you just don't know what's mm-hmm. going on, but just great episode, great show. And, I'm glad we had a chance to talk about it because it's. Oh yeah, I'm awesome. I'm glad to be on this episode for sure. So yeah. me too. I, would, I mean, walkabout and as a whole. I mean, think about it. They're all on a walkabout. They're all yeah on this island, and because the island is there, it's a journey of self discovery for them, mm-hmm. and so they're all really experiencing that. Because even when Locke gets, I hate to keep going on, but when Locke gets, when the boar comes in and knocks down Michael, and they go falling back, he's at. Uh, you're going okay. What's wrong with it? What's wrong with him? Why is he not getting back up? You know, he, he didn't get knocked out. And it almost like he lost use of his legs for a sec. Did he, did he, yeah. did the island say, okay, you know, we're, you're not doing, you know, what happened there? Cause it didn't look like he was moving. Right. Yeah. It, it, obviously the island must have some pull on him because yeah. it was like, you know, sometimes I, I, I always tell my kids this adage, it's kind of in a way like, look, the universe will tell you what you, where you're supposed to go or, you, you know, you, you know, you got to pay attention. And if you're on the wrong path, you pay attention. So you get back on the path. And um, I, I think sometimes maybe the island was trying to give Locke some messages here and there. And he, again, <laughs> not paying attention. That happened, no, uh, yeah, that's that Locke. About three or four times where he lost his legs and you see mm-hmm. a panic look on his face. is just pathetic. Well, there's even this scene uh, later on not in the, down the road where he hits, well, the, the stick goes in his leg. Yeah. And he yeah. doesn't realize it. Yeah. So you're like going, okay, did he lose the feeling in his his stick? You know, I'm not stick. <laughs> his leg there. Did, you, did yeah. he lose something there? Right. But, uh, yeah, just a... Incredible episode, and just uh, like I said, it sets up the next one. And 
Mm -hmm. I don't know. I just I, I could go watch it again. Good stuff. In fact, yeah. it's, 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 it has been hard because I don't want to get too far ahead. So I, it's hard to stop. <laughs> yep. I wanted to watch the next episode. I go, okay, I got to stop because I'm going to get confused and I'm going to, you know, start talking about stuff I don't want to talk about. But right. anyway, great having you guys on. This has been fun. I've enjoyed it. Karen, stay safe. Thank you so much. I had a blast. I really did. Thank you guys, both of you, for your company tonight. I had a, a really great time. Thank you. Yeah, this is fun. And you guys are welcome back anytime. Great. Thanks, anytime. If, there's, if there's an episode you guys want to talk about, just let me know and uh, we can pencil you in. Because the next next I have Ryan and Jen from The Transmission. You might have heard nice. of Nice. Oh, of course. We're going to talk, <laughs> we're gonna talk about The White Rabbit and House. Nice. Great. So, uh, not House, but I, I just wrote down House. But anyway, they're, they're going to do that and we're going to go on and... Uh, I think that I was talking about last night on another podcast. That was the first podcast I ever listened to was yeah. the transmission mm -hmm. was the transmission. So yeah. I, cause Jason, Jay said, you have to listen to this podcast. And I go, I go, I can't do that. I can't be, <laughs> I can't be professional in Oregon. And look <laughs> at you now. <laughs> well, no, I'm still all over the place. I, I got a lot of lock in me. So, you know, I got the hair, I got the hairstyle with lock, but that's why I always, I, I always, I will understand lock because there's a lot of lock in me. Sure. I, I have a lot of don't tell me what I can't do. And I, I get, I, oh, what's, what's over there? <laughs> <laughs> but no, this has been great. I really appreciate you guys joining, Thank joining you. us on this, Thank this journey. And, and um, that's it. We're out. Great. Thank you so much. Namaste. See you guys again.